I just got back from San Diego with Toyota, where I saw the Forerunner. We also drove the Land Cruiser, the Tacoma Hybrid, the Crown Signia, the Camry. I got a lot of videos coming on those vehicles. But probably more important to me was I spent a lot of time with Toyota's chief engineer, Sheldon Brown. And I got a lot of insight on in what they're doing on the next generation Toyota Tundra. He didn't give me any factual stuff. I don't have any concrete evidence of things. But I've been doing this job for a minute, yeah, like a decade or so, as the kids say. And I could read through the lines a little bit. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what I predict that it's going to come out with the 2026 Toyota Tundra refresh. It's a mid-cycle refresh of what you can expect to see on this new truck. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I do my best, talk as slow as I can, and enunciate all my words. It's just my speech. It's what I got. So let's go ahead and talk about this Tundra. I'm also going to talk about Tundra and Sequoia, kind of put them together. So going back in time... People are saying, well, they had seven years, Tim, to get the Tundra right, and they failed to do it. Well, they didn't really have seven years. What it was, was they redid all the body on frames together in a group. So Forerunner, Land Cruiser, Tacoma, Tundra, Sequoia were all kind of thought about as a group of off-road vehicles. And they started doing development changes to all of them. And so when they start doing this stuff, they're bringing in engineers throughout the company engine engineers, transmission engineers, infotainment engineers. Remember, the infotainment screen was a big change to Tundra as well, and now it's gone through the other vehicles. And they bring them all together, and they put these vehicles out in like, like a deck of cards. You're like dealing a card occasionally because they don't want to overwhelm the marketplace with all these new vehicles. And they need to still validate some things as they go through. So the Tundra was the first one that came out of this group of off-road vehicles. And as most people know in life, the first one through the door of anything that's new gets bloody. It gets his always nose broke. Always takes a lot of a lot of grief, right? And that's what says, especially happened with Tundra. There was a lot of haters on it. A lot of people were frustrated about it. And now we're looking at coming back and doing a refresh. And how do we adjust to those people's criticisms and make that truck better? And I think that's what one key part of this refresh is going to be. So Toyota is very methodical when they do these product cycles. Every seven years, a new vehicle comes out. You can argue whether the Tundra in 2021 or 2014 was new or not. I'll let you decide that in the comments. But every seven years, a new vehicle comes out. And every three to four years, they do what's called a mid-cycle refresh. And this is what they're going to do. So looking at the Tundra and talking with Sheldon about things, you know, we know that, well, I know, he's watched a lot of my videos. <laughs> and he's heard a lot of your criticisms, too, about this Tundra. He's heard a lot of people talking about, you know, tow hooks or the seat cracking or the weather trimming, weather stripping not meeting correctly on the, the rear windows. He's heard a lot about the window vibrations. He's heard a lot about center consoles. So he's got a lot of information. This is what he does. Collects all information about this truck. Then he goes back to his studio and or to his engineering office. And he says, okay, guys, I, I went through the forums. I watched Tim's videos. I watched TFL's videos. I watched everybody else's videos. I read their, read the comments. I read the stories. This is what I think are key items we need to address. And this is where we need to take truck next level. So key items to address, and I have, I have a list here. Um, and let's kick this off with the engine. So there's been a lot of conversation with the engine of not being the 5.7 V8, it's a triple-charged engine. But one thing you have to understand is that this engine is a global engine. They use it throughout the world, right? So I did a video yesterday about how the next generation Tundra will probably come, the engine will come with gasoline particulate filters. Well, that 3.4 in Europe already has gasoline particulate filters. It's next level of EPA um, certification for emissions. And so I think we're going to see some changes to the engine coming out in 2026. Am I predicting gasoline particulate filters on that? No, it's still up in the air. So they haven't, EPA does, hasn't really finalized the rules yet on what model year things need to happen. But I think that's going to be in the works. They, they know they have to do it. So they may just do it then, or they may hold off one more year, depending on what they want to do with the EPA emissions. But we're also going to see them go through the variety of issues that we've had with this engine, right? They're going to look at the wastegate issue yet again, just to make sure that the supplier is doing the part right. They'll look at the crank case. There's been some bad bearings. Some engines have failed here in the United States. And they'll go through and make sure those details are right. The problem that they run into is that this engine is used globally. So if they're going to build 200,000 vehicles with this engine globally, but I have 40 United States with, with a problem, you know, now you need to go validate that that crankcase is or crankshaft is a problem the bearings are a problem or what exactly the problem is verify that's a problem figure out whether it's a design issue 
or engineering issue, or it's going to be a supplier issue. I guess it's engineering supplying, same deal, or engineering design, same deal. But and then you got to look at globally. Are they seeing just problems in the United States? Are they seeing problems in India? Are they seeing problems in Europe? And then you got to say, okay, if you make a change with that part, how does it impact all the vehicles globally? That's why things take so long to change for some companies, especially like a to Toyota, that's such a massive company that does global things. So you're going to see, I think, some engine changes, some engine refinements. They're going to take off some parts, add some parts on. They're going to make the things, look at things of reliability. This always happens. Um, I've interviewed engine engineers for years, and they always tell me, look, we, you know, we took away this one part to make it more reliable because we didn't need it. You know, that's what, what happens. They're like, well, why do we have another part on there if that part can fail? Why not just get around it, make the engine more simple? They're, engine engineers, they hate planned obsolescence. They want things to run forever. That's what their goal is. So I think we're going to see some small engine changes. It's not going to be the B8s coming back. That's a problem with global emissions. And as we learned from the Slantis engineer interview I did, that's a problem with the displacement size. In certain countries, they find automakers by having a larger displacement engine. And the automakers pass it on to consumers. So looking at two trucks, one's a thousand dollars more because it's got a bigger displacement engine. It tends the customer tends to go with less money for the cheaper vehicle. So very competitive marketplace. So I think we're gonna see some changes there. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot of changes to the exterior, right? So this is something that I've talked a lot about this channel, and I've had my concerns with this truck is that the exterior, and I bought this truck, I own a 2022, and people are like, Tim, you hate Toyota. I don't hate Toyota. I just want them to do better, like most Toyota fans do. And I had a lot of issues with my Tundra. And I think they're going to address those issues. And I think I'm going to be a lot happier. I don't say that much. Uh, and so what are we looking at here? I'm going to pull this. I'm, I am on Toyota's.com. And sorry if you don't like this format. I love sharing the screen with you guys. There's some few people that don't like it. I'm not sure why. But looking at this image right here, this is the platinum grade. Uh, no, limited grade of the Tundra. This is the same one I had. So I think we're going to see some changes. I think the first priority for them is going to be right below these fog lamps. I think we're going to find tow hooks being offered in the off-road trims. I don't think we're going to see them all across the board. So like Ram does this only in upgraded. You can upgrade the package to get tow hooks, or you can get the um, Ram Rebel with tow hooks and or the and the Ram TRX. I think we're going to say same thing with Toyota. We're going to see. The lower trim levels will still have this kind of blank bumper on the front as an op, as a standard, but then you can option in to different tow hooks. And I think we're going to see how we're going to we're going to find this. It's going to be I'm going to pull this video up. Okay, here we go. Video I shot right. I was talking about oil filter, and um, I couldn't find a better video of this, so you have to excuse me. But I'm going to go right here. I go come on play. Right. And I back up for a second here. I back in, I turn the camera, and it's going to be right there. You see that red hook below? It's actually mounted on like an extension of the frame there, and it's going to be below the radiator. I think that's what they're going to end up doing, is that they're going to offer this trim, uh, offer Toex in a package, and it's going to bolt in like the same thing that Tacoma has, and they're going to redesign the bumper to match more of what they're doing in current styling with the what came out later, right? So what came out later? Okay, so what are they gonna do? I think they're gonna change the front end of those trucks, bring the skid plate back up and cut that bottom bumper off. Do you see it here on the Tacoma Trail Hunter? How much different that front bumper is? I think we're gonna do the same thing with the Tundra here. If I go back to that photo I had, or even the TRD Pro Tundra, you can see that bumper is, is all the way down a lot of plastic there. I think what we're gonna find with next generation of the Tundra is that blank piece there is going to be taken away, recessed. We're going to bring the tow hook, or the tow hooks, put them on that part of the frame, and they're going to reinforce that frame coming out, and they're going to add this extra skid plate there. And that's going to be an option from the factory. I think we're going to see that on like a TRD off-road package limited or things like this. And I think we're going to see it more with the TRD Pro. I think we're going to get a very similar bottom look here, bottom of the, of the bumper. And we're going to resolve that tow hook issue, because I think that they saw the change, they made a change in the factory, in design, and they come out with the Tacoma and the Forerunner this way as well. So I think you're going to see that change happen as it rolls out. I think it's just going to be easy fix. Um, another thing they're going to do is the weather stripping around the rear of the crew cab window. Now, I talked about this a lot in the video. So if you if you get a, a Tundra and you look at the rear windows, you'll see weather stripping go around. There's a 
gap about this big where it comes down to meet in the corner. Looking at this, even with that seal all the way down, I still have a gap here. If you look at the Tacoma, what Sheldon's team did in that situation was they put a big piece, piece of like molding on top of that and that, that weather stripping goes in and the molding goes over top of that. So it's a clean look. And I think it's an easy fix. And I think they're gonna do the same thing on a refresh Tundra because they learn from feedback. And so we'll see that change happen. I also think we're gonna see something on the rear bumper. Okay, here we go. Here's the best photo I can find for you guys of this. See when this tailgate goes down, we have a rounded bumper corner there and the rounded comes up. And so my challenge is, is you can't get in the bed this way unless you're taller. Uh, I'm not taller. Athletic, not for me. I'm not that athletic. And so I would like to see some way to get in. I like even that little little flat step that I could, I could get, hop into. Now, I'd love them see, to see them do a true bumper step, but apparently GM has so many patents on that bumper step, it's almost impossible to recreate it. They just can't copy it because it's patented by General Motors. So we can't do that. But I think in this case, it's just go back to the old style, put the, put the cap on it. Now, this was done because they liked the way the Sequoia looked. They went rounded off corner. It's a different use case. So to Tahoe, Yukon, Sequoia, all SUVs have that rounded corner to it, but you don't have to get in the truck that way. The tailgate opens up. You don't have the tailgate going down, right? And so, and I also think it's different with the, the Tacoma. The Tacoma, the tailgate goes down, but the Tacoma is a shorter truck. And so it's not an issue with that tailgate going down. And I think in this case, what we're going to see is we're going to see Toyota go back and put that little step along the side or come up with something unique for that bed. Because that, that to me is a real issue. And adding the bed step that comes down, it does help. But to me, come on, guys, just cut that off a little bit and make that a little bit differently. I think we can make that happen. And we've seen that happen. And we've seen that happen. This is a photo of a Toyota Tundra Trail Hunter that was demoed at SEMA a couple years ago. And I can't quite turn this image quite enough, but you can see it's got a steel bumper in the back. They actually cut off all of that plastic bumper and they put a steel bumper back there and it's got a flatter surface on there. So I think we can see that same design happening in other trucks, maybe not a full steel bumper back there, but at least cutting that off and making a big change there. Our suspension there, then we have some rack rails. On the back, we have a custom bumper back here. You can see where they cut it, but what's nice is they put a little piece of plastic along there and so you can't see how, you know, well, how well or not well they cut that. So uh, rigid lights in the back, the bumper there. And the idea here is, oh, look at the back. I didn't see that either. So it's like, an, it's like a sticker of Trail Hunter back there and Trail Hunter there now. Okay, now let's talk about inside the cabin. What are they going to do to make some changes here? Because there's been a few issues happening. So I don't think you're seeing anything too drastic inside. I think you see different material choices for limited. They always offer a different uh, color combinations. That's kind of the refresh process, refresh playbook for every automotive brand. But I could see a few things. So I talked about the window, but I talked about more about the window rattling on the side of the, the driver's side. TRD John has had this issue with two different Tundras he's had. I think you'll find a little bit different uh, build inside that weather stripping changing inside that window to stop that rattling happening inside the door. So we're going to see that change inside. I think we're also going to see the center console would shift a little bit and it wasn't quite sturdy especially that little tray that would come back and forth, just rattle a little bit. I think we'll find Toyota's looking for some, maybe some better materials, a better supplier. And I think we'll find that being solved through more what they call Kaizen. The, the Kaizen's Japanese world word for internal improvement. They're always trying to change things, make things better. I think we're going to find that as well. The third thing I think is going to make a big difference for a lot of customers. And I know for me is, and I found this photo because I want to make sure I illustrate this, is that cell phone there that, Toyota has a wireless charger on the Tundra, but it doesn't have any way to sit in the slot. It's just basically a piece of plastic that kind of goes, um, it kind of just goes straight down and your phone slides back and forth a lot. And I find this happening a lot with Toyota vehicles. The Camry is, is and the Toyota Crown Signia. Th there's some challenges here with the wireless charger. They don't have a spot to really hold it in. I think what we're going to see here is I think they're going to take a playbook from the Tacoma, right? So Tundra goes through the door first, gets bloody. They see these issues. They make a small change to the Tacoma. The Tacoma now, the holder is the same idea, the same styling idea, but it's got a good piece of rubber down there that holds your phone in place. You basically hold your phone in a slot. I think we're going to find that change is going to happen. In the Crown Signia, they actually have a pocket that goes in as rubber around it. So I think Toyota is very much hearing everybody talking about 
how the wireless charger loses and adds. And you, as you're driving, you bounce a little bit, your phone comes off, it doesn't hold a charge, it doesn't charge the phone up at all. And all of a sudden your phone's dead. You know, it's just, it, trust me, it's happened to me. So I think we're going to find that Toyota is going to go ahead and put some rubber around there to hold that phone in. I, I, I feel like that's something they've heard as well. And talking, like I said, talking with Sheldon Brown, he indicated to me that he's seen my videos, he's seen your comments, he's seen those things, and it's going to be on his list. He's probably going to see this one too, and maybe right on the list too. But I think we'll see that change as well. Okay, the final change that's going to happen, and I believe this is going to be a 2026 model because they've already 2024's model year's done. 2025 is going to be the year of the forerunner, and they're going to delay this to have something to talk about. That's how marketing does it. I think the development of this truck's done. They've made these changes happen. They're just waiting for the product rollout sequence to match up, right? So you do Tacoma, then you do Tacoma Hybrid, then you do Forerunner, then you go back and do Sequoia and Tundra. I think it's very clear at this stage what the new thing's going to come out in 2026. It's going to be a new trim level. I think it's going to be this guy. So this was a couple of years ago at SEMA, and I was there, and I was so excited about this vehicle. Um, this, I think, is going to be coming to marketplace. I believe that Toyota talked about this at SEMA as a teaser. They basically were trying to get feedback from you, the consumers. And me, I freaking love this thing. I was like, that's what I want to buy. I love the Trail Hunter uh, idea. I love what they're doing Trail Hunter. So what is this Trail Hunter going to be? It's going to be your overlanding kind of rig. Overlanding has been really popular. You've seen the Coma do a, a Trail Hunter. You've seen the Forerunner do a trail, trail Hunter now. You're going to see it in the Sequoia and in the Tundra. And you're going to see a few key changes, right? So we'll do some A or B um, situation. I scroll over these pops up the screen, but we'll do some... A or B type ladder rack in the back that you can extend with mole holders for different things. Uh, we're going to see this bumper, and I'm going to I'm going to pull this bumper up. We're going to see this kind of bumper, right? So I talked about this earlier in the video, where I believe we're going to see the frame extension come out below the radiator. It's going to bolt on. Then we'll see tow hooks come up from there. In this case, we can see a bumper like this idea. I don't think it's going to be exactly like this. It's going to be more like the way the Forerunner looks will be that kind of bumper, but the same idea, the lower third of that bumper, like I showed you earlier will be more of a solid steel bumper with more of a skid plate, more tow hooks. And that's how Toyota is getting around the safety issues and things they, they encountered within the corporation. Why they didn't do it the first time was because they were worried about crash testing and things like this, that I think because they can do a low volume model, sell three to 4% of Toyota Tundras with this in the tow hook trail hunter, they can get beyond the, the concerns the company has about safety. I think we're gonna see that come out. That's gonna have to get around, around things. I think we'll also see, like I said, that 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 rear um, storage area, and then in the bed, we're going to see a lot of different accessories, right? So you'll see some collaborations, A or B. Maybe you see a deck cargo slider in there, a deck situation in there. We'll see some storage in there. We'll see some different things for that new trail hunter. And so I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see the badging, all that kind of unique stuff on the trail hunter that will come out in 2026. So let's recap here what I'm seeing. Uh, not going to be 2025 model because we'll do a lot of forerunner stuff. We'll do a mid cycle refresh. We'll talk a lot about this truck next year. It'll be a 2026 model when it comes out. Are we going to see some changes to the uh, engine? We may see a gasoline particular filter, may see some different changes from a liability standpoint, as long as it works globally with this, this engine being sold globally, as long as all those parts work, we'll see a little bit change there, a little bit of refinement as happens, um, as happens in most um, brands. Exterior wise, we'll see some recovery hooks added and tow hooks, whatever word you want to use. We'll see it come up from the frame up below. We'll see it bolted in. I believe we'll see some changes to the bumper of the Sequoia and the Tundra, the more mirror, the Tacoma and Forerunner bumper front end. We'll see a little bit different changes. Maybe the skid plate comes up. Maybe we see the Trail Hunter kind of solid steel bumper. We're going to see some changes with that. I also think we're going to see some changes to the rear bumper in the case of the Tundra. I'm hoping to make a change there. I'm hoping they, they square that off a little bit. Give us a step to get in so we don't have to buy the aftermarket step or have to buy the high trim level that has the bed step. I'm hoping that change happens. We won't see a true like GM built-in bed step, um, bumper step, because that has been um, patented. And Ford got away with that because they were able to bolt that to the frame. They made enough of a change that they wouldn't get sued from a patent infringement standpoint. Interior fixes, I think we're going to see some issue fix the issues of window, center console. We'll see a different kind of design because um, that hasn't really been fixed so far. There have been a lot of people still talking about it. We'll see some design, weather stripping. We'll see some changes there, I think. Um, I also think we'll see some changes to the wireless charging, or I'm hoping we will, to make that little bit of a, a holder for it so the phone doesn't move around as much. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot more interior changes besides, say, different color accommodations, different pat interior um, design things, which 
tends to happen. They'll use the material for a while. They'll change it up. They'll just kind of give it a fresher look. That's what they're going to try to do. And then I think finally that we're going to see the big change. We'll see a Trail Hunter version come out. Again, they teased it at CM a couple years ago. Then they came off the Tacoma, came off the Forerunner, and now it's like, come on. Tundra Sequoia should be next for that next trim level for that truck. And so I think that's what we're going to see in the 2026 model year. I'll be curious to know what do you guys think for your comments down below. Are you excited about any of these changes? Am I right? Am I wrong? I know you'll tell me. <laughs> uh, check out the website as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.